Hi, everybody. In, uh, let's see, 13 minutes, it will be 9-11. 18 years after 9-11, 2001. And, boy, either it's the day of or the eve. I always think back to my experiences. On that day, yeah, I was glued to the TV, just like everybody else, watching that second plane go into another trade center. Um, I knew on that day that our government was involved. How did I know that? Because a news reporter came in from Long Island and he was reporting on all of these dump trucks, empty dump trucks lined up on the West Side Highway, waiting, waiting, he said, to cart away the debris. I will never forget. Cart away the debris on the day of 9-11, I, you don't have to be an attorney to realize that uh, debris? No, they're carting away the evidence. And I also thought, how could it be that they have dump trucks lined up on that day to cart away the debris on the West Side Highway? I'm a New Yorker, and I lived for a while on the West Side Highway in the village. I know uh, Wall Street area. I know the World Trade Center area. My sister lived in the financial district. The roads are very narrow. And I also knew that our first responders were trying to get cars and trucks and every to not come into that area to uh, allow for the fire trucks and the first responders easy access to that area. And I thought, well, huh. So on the West Side Highway, all of these dump trucks lined up, empty waiting to cart away the debris. Who gave the approval for those dump trucks? It must have been some government official. So I also watched those two World Trade Centers come down in seconds, in seconds, uh, one kind of right after the other. That was a wow, to say the least. And I knew that it was not from a plane that struck way up above, you know, those World Trade Centers. Uh, <laughs> I'm still embarrassed when I think when those trade centers were going up, I was angry about it. Don't ask me why I felt loyal to the Empire State Building. Don't ask. I don't know. Ah, some things that, you know, we have, uh, we, there's, I don't know why. I don't know why, but yeah. I felt loyal to the Empire State Building. I wanted the Empire State Building to always remain the tallest building. And the World Trade Centers were going to be taller than the Empire State Building. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I also learned that I have, a, the, I guess, a height phobia from the World Trade Center. I was interviewing for a job. I don't know, some, I think it was in the 40s, the 40th floor. And I was in this conference room and the man who was interviewing me had a call. So he walked out of the room. I walked to the windows. And if you know the World Trade Center, you know that, well, it's just flat up and down and the windows in the World Trade Center from floor to ceiling. 
Well, I walked over to that window and I literally felt like this force inside me pulling me, like it was gonna pull me out of the window. I jumped back and I walked out. I, I, there was no way that I was going to be working in the World Trade Center. So, yeah. All right, well, you know, it's funny too, because as a New Yorker, that day, I wanted to be back in New York. And not a lot of people understand New York is a hometown for New Yorkers. I wanted, I, I so wanted to be there. And it's funny because after 9-11, so many people wanted to get out of New York and they did get out of New York precisely because of, you know, this, this incident and others, but I wanted to move back. Since 9-11, I have encountered so many of my friends, so many in my social network, you know, the, uh, what they consider themselves to be the educated elite. They don't really know or understand what that elite means. Yeah, the liberal progressive Democrats, none of them I could get through to. None of them. I didn't know what happened, but something really happened. Whether it was that Americans were so traumatized that they they couldn't face the truth. But then years and years and years and years and years go by and, well, you don't expect that trauma to linger. I've had so many encounters of being called, you know, all these names and, I mean, my friends, attorneys, attorneys where well, with that group of people, facts and evidence are really important. And suddenly it didn't matter. It, the facts and evidence were, don't want to hear it. It's as if something took over Americans that day. And for many, that takeover has been permanent. What is what is really astounding to me is the lack of care, the lack of care. And, you know, there was a lack of care that I saw in my friends to know the truth. They, they were not interested and many became hostile, hostile. And I remember doing, oh my God, I tried everything I could to reach my friends. And I remember, you know, uh, bringing a DVD and it was the Jersey girls, the, the wives of, uh, those who had died on 9-11. I can't remember their names and I'm I'm sorry, I, I can't remember their names, but they were the ones who got the 9-11 Commission and they were the ones who were outraged by the 9-11 Commission's report because they knew it was based on lies. But I, I would try to find, you know, the appropriate video you know, some of my friends, you know, I thought that they would identify with these women. And, well, one got up in the middle of it and walked out and said, that's it. And I, I was like, that's it? What, what does that mean? She, she would not take any of it in. She could not. <clears throat> It was almost like looking at this scared 
child who was an adult in her 50s. She would not listen to them, watch the full video. Then, of course, being called a conspiracy theorist and Well, I had been sent by subscribers who might be thinking why I haven't posted on this, this, uh, this study, a research team at the University of Alaska's Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. They released their findings, I don't know, about a week ago. It was a four-year study of the collapse of the World Trade Center Building 7. And it was the first scientific investigation of the collapse, which is 18 years. It only took them 18 years. Well, here uh, is the conclusion of their study. The principal conclusion of our study is that fire did not cause the collapse of World Trade Center 7 on 9-11 contrary to the conclusions of NIST and private engineering firms that studied the collapse. The secondary conclusion, conclusion of our study is that the collapse of World Trade Center 7 was a global failure involving the near simultaneous failure of every column in the building. Yeah, <laughs> we don't need this study actually to uh, know that there was not a fire. We don't need this study. But it sure is good to have the study, right? Facts, evidence. Well, facts and evidence are meaningless today. I don't know what to do anymore because there is a, an aversion to the truth and there is an apathy that is so profound and so great and so deep that even sharing this information, most could care less. We don't resolve our problems. You know, when I think about all of my experiences, when I think about our collective experience. How many people do you know actually resolve problems that they have in their own lives? And I'm not talking about, you know, problems at work or, you know, it, just individually, socially, you know. Most people just walk away. They're not interested in getting to the truth of the problem that they have with one another. They just throw people away. You know, how many do you have in your life that regard the truth as something sacrosanct? I mean, without truth, we've got nothing, nothing. And frankly, without truth, life is rendered meaningless. There's no point, no point in anything. So, you know, but didn't we watch that building just collapse in its footprint? Didn't we hear that guy say, okay, pull it? Didn't we hear from uh, reporters and first responders talking about all of the explosions that they heard, the bombs? Something happened that day that suddenly it was, I noticed a change in people that was really quite remarkable. I noticed a change because I was a news buff. You know, I always had the news on. If I was in the car, I was listening to the news. You know, and I was, you know, watching many different uh, news channels 
and suddenly I noticed after 2001, our reporters began to act in ways that I never saw them behaving. I, I never saw the immaturity that I was suddenly seeing. And I remember sitting, watching, as an example, Chris Matthews, uh, Hardball, which used to be, you know, a pretty good show, you know, for, well, I, I can't think of any specific show that I was watching and whether or not I was listening to lies. You know, I was still trapped in the matrix, but, but suddenly Chris Matthews started like jumping on his guests and humiliating guests and, uh, you know, watching these, what were really like talk shows about specific issues, people weren't able to finish their sentences. They were interrupted. They were being called names. But I saw this in an awful lot of these mainstream media news shows, the reporters. Uh, nobody was acting like an adult anymore. And I sure did notice the absence. Oh, huh. what, what a day can make from 9-11-2001. All of those reporters talking about explosions, talking, you know, interviewing people, talking about explosions um, and suddenly the day after it was gone no one was talking about it you heard a known news reporter and I can't remember his name but he was at the Pentagon and he was talking about how well where's the plane and no one saw a plane and he was essentially providing the Americans with the evidence. No plane hit the Pentagon and then he backtracked on that and you know, claimed that I can't remember exactly but it was the opposite of what he claimed. It was very clear to me that something was very wrong early on. Early on. You know, that wasn't necessarily my wake-up call. My wake-up call, well, it was 9-11, um, which was really just a progression of, you know, my learning how, how corrupt our country is. And it was also a progression of noticing that the American people were just not right. They, they, they were not well. But this carried on, you know, it wasn't just the immediate after effects. It was, it, it, I no longer have friends. I, I had to walk away from all of them because their interest in the truth, they don't got it. They have none. You know, and during the Bush and Cheney years, I remember the dinner parties and <laughs> all of us screaming about Bush and Cheney and how they need to be hung for their lies, getting us into a war based on lies. Obama comes in. I try to point out his lies. I'm dark. I'm just negative. I'm this, I'm that. Uh, they had no interest. They were cheerleaders for their leader and their team, and that was it. And that was my walk away before the walk away hashtag. So another report comes out. The findings, no, sorry. Uh, clearly, you know, if every column in the building has a near simultaneous failure, that means demolition. Who do you think will care? 
No, these people will just go on lying and, you know, 18 years later, we are no longer the United States. We're a police state, a surveillance state. Our rights have been taken away and Americans didn't even care about that. This is Paul Craig Roberts, by the way. This is his article. So notice the three things. It has taken 18 years to get a real investigation of the destruction of a building blamed on Muslim terrorists. Two, the only way near simultaneous failure of every column in the building can occur is through controlled demolition. And three, this remarkable finding is not reported in the prostitute media. And the study, yeah, assigned to the memory hole. But it doesn't have to go to the memory hole. You bring this information to your family members, to your friends, to your neighbors, to your associates, to your acquaintances, to your community members. Will they care? Will they care? This is the way the matrix operates. This is why you need this website. The only purpose of print and TV news is to program you so that you in soup can't really, oh, forget it, go along with the agendas of those who rule you. Those who sit in front of TV news, listen to NPR, or read newspapers are programmed to be mindless automatons. And then, of course, there was the resolution of the Franklin Square and Munson Fire District. They calling for a real investigation. You know, September 11, 2001. While operating at the World Trade Center in New York City, firefighter Thomas Hetzel, badge number 290 of Hook and Ladder Company number one, Franklin Square, Munson, Munson Fire Department of New York, was killed in performance of his duties. Along with 2,976 other emergency responders and civilians. You would think Americans would care about all that died and their loved ones wanting to get to the truth. I posted so many videos on 9-11 um, and I'm remembering that father that I can't remember his name desperate for the truth to come out because his son died watching him hold back tears and he being humiliated and attacked. It's funny how the truth is so frightening to most people that they attack with such hostility and they degrade you, you know, with a range of names and whatever comes to their mind. You know, I mean, how many do you know care about the first responders who were told, oh, the air is perfectly safe? How many have died from breathing in all of those toxins? That's our government for you. You know, they'll tell you, hey, it's safe. No problem. That was the head of the EPA the former governor of New Jersey. I see her face, but I can't remember her name. I've always had a problem recalling names, so unless you're a dog, but so many have died and you, you can't get people to care. You know, that that's, if they're just you know, fooling themselves, believing that they're just caring and compassionate, but they don't because th 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 their care and compassion is never demonstrated in action. You know, th they, their belief is okay. That's, that's fine for them. It works for them. 
So we need Americans to be on the same page. Now, I posted the video, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. talking about what happened in California, the passing of SB 276, as, as, uh, SB 714. This is the quote-unquote truth community, and so many left comments claiming he's controlled opposition, he's satanic, he's an elitist, he's just with them, it's, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's been around for 40 years and he hasn't done a thing and it's, uh, he's, you know, pretending to care and they just rip people to shreds with no evidence, no evidence. See, that kind of thinking needs to be thought about. And when you do that, you have no regard for the truth. You have no regard for the truth. It doesn't matter to you. When you leave these disparaging comments with no evidence, you show me that you're on the other side. You're just wanting to rip people, you know, apart. There are people who are famous. There are people in Hollywood. There are people in... Uh, in government, there are people in all industries who know the truth, try to speak it, and they get in the truth community slandered. You know, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., there's no benefit for him in what he's doing. He joining, you know, the fight against these mandatory vaccines and speaking out publicly about big pharma, vaccine manufacturers, speaking publicly about how many children are getting affected by these vaccines, how many children are dying. What's the benefit for him? Where's the controlled opposition, you know? I mean, this guy has been so humiliated publicly. His family, even, uh, some in his family has, they wrote a piece about how, well, essentially he's a nut job. And they don't understand, you know, his thinking and and then Robert F. Kennedy wanted to respond in kind, thinking that he was going to be able to publish his response in the same publication that I think a sister was involved in, in writing a piece in that publication, but, but he was stopped. You know, people, oh, he's on the world stage? This man has been prevented from speaking uh, banned at one of the California um, town halls um, from participating uh, ah, because it's, it, you know, he's famous and he's been in politics for a long time. That's enough. That's all the evidence I need, right? So you're just yet another person who does the opinion, hey, that's just um, as weighty as facts and evidence. No, it is not. No, it is not. So the Board of Fire Commissioners of the Franklin Square and Munson Fire District fully supports a comprehensive federal grand jury investigation and prosecution of every crime related to the attacks of September 11, as well as any and all efforts by other government entities to investigate and uncover the full truth surrounding the evidence of that horrible day. You know, I brought up the, uh, the reading all of these comments about, you know, that trashed Robert F. Kennedy with no evidence. And nothing, nothing gets me more wanting to just give up and say to hell with it because you know, here we are in this truth community, and, well, truth means facts, evidence, and all that kind of stuff, but they don't care. Um, 
and it, it's really oh another comment was Robert F. Kennedy said the word democracy that we were a democracy or whatever my god that's been programmed into everybody's mind as well because to hear anybody say constant I noticed that in the 80s like all right what's going on why is everybody calling this country a democracy it's a constitutional republic okay so he called it a democracy and boom that's it that's enough evidence he's a controlled opposition he's lying you know oh my god this is what I saw I I, I demarcate my life pre and post 9-11 I saw a radical change in how adults were behaving now I knew about the infantilization that was going on in the early 80s I saw it happen you know socially engineering the American people to just never become adults yeah oh yeah your body is getting older and older and okay so you have a job and you're paying your bills that doesn't that doesn't mean you're an adult you know there was also at the same time there was a lot of social engineering going on in the early 80s the infantilization of the American people new age philosophies whoa man that hit the stage and people were just like you know flies on shit to the new age movement moral relativism I get to decide what is right and wrong language suddenly you you if you said the word blame oh my god people would just like turn around and you were just you know oh, you weren't you you were looked at as subhuman blame okay well we used to blame people uh, for you know things that they did now oh no one is to blame yeah so you socially engineer the American people to never hold anybody accountable but they like that because they don't get held accountable as well so everybody can just go off and do whatever the hell they want and they don't care about the effect that they have on other people in fact the new age uh, crap philosophy religion uh, principles you know that oh well if you feel something that means something's wrong with you oh so you betray me you lie to me uh, and I get upset and it means something's wrong with me when I get upset really is this the way we're going yeah that's the way we've been going but also to never hold any government official accountable and that's what we're exceptional at right why bother when all you hear you know well Obama campaigning he was going just like Trump campaigning to hold this woman accountable right oh yeah but then his first interview with 60 Minutes what does he say ah uh, you know they've been through enough those Clintons and and she's a good woman and no uh, uh, already hasn't even you know small uh, sworn the uh, oath of office and already he's showing you he's a liar but don't care oh wow okay I get to relive my first Obama days now with the Trump days with the Trump supporters who don't care ah okay oh right he was playing 3d chess then now he's playing 4d chess um, you know <laughs> but Obama campaigned on holding Bush and Cheney accountable for their lies and then comes into office and says you know what let's not play the blame game let's move forward 
Ah, that moving forward. The past doesn't matter. Forget about the past. Let it go. Forget it. The past is always with us. It don't go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, that past, the beginning of this country, or even prior, the near genocide of the native people, the slavery, none of that stuff goes away. It doesn't go away. It needs to be resolved. So it's always here with us. And guess what? Government officials and leaders can always bring up that race card and boom, get everybody triggered. It works because not much has ever been resolved in our country. JFK, his assassination, Iran-Contra, no. In fact, uh, those who were found guilty and uh, they got immunity, they got pardoned. Uh, who's the Venezuelan czar that Trump brought in? Well, yeah. Uh, a guy that is a felon um, and has a record, a proven record, evidence, facts, that that man is responsible for the killing and torturing of so many people. And Bush, Cheney bringing in Poindexter, you know, the Iran-Contra guy that also was found guilty, but oh well, a federal court on appeals reversed the conviction because Congress gave him immunity for his testimony. So we've got criminals going on in our government and nobody cares. No one cares. But, you know, all right, fine. We're not going to hold Bush and Cheney accountable. Great. Where did that get us? Obama. It got us Obama. It got us eight years of lying and more tyranny cementing itself, just like the two years of Trump or two and a half years of Trump. This is, this is essentially what the American people are now. Americans have become children, demanding, dependent, needy. Uh, children in terms of, well, I don't have to deal with the adult stuff. The adult stuff meaning very serious things happening in this country. I just have to go to work and pay my bills and I'm an adult. No, don't work like that. Well, it does work like that for me. It works for me. So you're self-centered. You don't care about it anything but your own self. You don't even care about your own children because this is, look at the world, this is the world now that you're leaving your children. Now I've spoken to grandparents and uh, they say right out, well I'll be dead, so I don't care. And of course a lot of the focus is on the millennials, but it was really the baby boomers that started the let's not grow up. Let's not grow up. Let's not care about anything but ourself. Let's, uh, hey, the one who dies with the most wins. And the baby boomers then had their own children. And they were self-centered, narcissistic, not saying pathological, but this, this narcissism that has really spread, has metastasized all over our country, came from somewhere. So the baby boomers were rather narcissistic. Then they have kids. They pass on that narcissism. And now we have a younger generation that, well, you try to talk to them about what this country was, they don't even have any concept 
of what real freedom is, though we didn't, but we had far more than they do. The opportunities that we had, gone for the younger generation. Try to talk to somebody in the older generation about that, and they don't care. Something is very, very wrong with the American people. You know, all of the surveillance, Google's got a new face tracking camera for your home. <laughs> okay, so Americans are loading themselves up with these gadgets. And I have spoken to some, and I've said, these are surveillance devices that you are putting in your home. They don't care. Google Home and Nest Hub gadgets already feature microphones that are always listening to the words that wake up the assistant, OK Google, hey Google, uh-uh, they're listening all the time. Now the search giant's newest gadget for your home, the Nest Hub Max Smart Display, adds in a camera that's always watching for a familiar face. A face match uses facial recognition technology to remember what you look like. After that, you can tap on the screen to see personalized bits of data like calendar, appointments, Google Duo messages, whenever it recognizes you. All right, you know, 2002 landmarks of the road to 1984 Orwellian hell. It's, uh, you know, in the recent years, the tyranny has become so obvious and even still, Americans don't care. Next month will be the 18th anniversary, anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Politicians and bureaucrats wasted no time after that carnage to unleash the surveillance state on average Americans treating every person like a terrorist suspect. Since the government failed to protect the public, Americans somehow forfeited their constitutional right to privacy. Despite heroic efforts by former NSA staffer Edward Snowden, and may I say, who's always forgotten, William Benny, Binney, who was really uh, a whistleblower unlike Edward Snowden. William Binney, I, I, I believe that it was even in 2002. And he was high up in the uh, National Security Agency. He developed a program, not understanding that it would be used to surveil the American public. And he came out. And then, boy, they put him through hell. Lawsuits that he eventually won. But trying to get my friends to listen? No. They didn't care. Everything was about their own comfort, their own happiness. Their own happiness. Yeah, Edward Snowden and a host of activists and freedom fighters, the government continues ravaging American privacy. Two of the largest leaps towards 1984 began in 2002 with a Republican uh, I'm not entirely sure if the Republicans had both houses, Senate and, and the House. Bush and Cheney, the Republican administration, and there's still people who believe that, who are quote unquote awake and yeah, they're about the truth, but they're still caught in the matrix. Um, we do not have two parties. It was Bush and Cheney and his administration, the Republicans, that pushed through the 
legislation that began to annihilate our individual rights, annihilate our constitutional rights, annihilate our privacy, didn't start with Obama, hasn't started with Trump, but it's gone on, doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, keeps going, and we keep getting more and more tyranny all over our country and less freedom, uh, treated truly like animals, or worse, taxed up the wazoo, you know, they're, <laughs> All right, I'm going to link below to this. Uh, you can read about Operation Tips in July 2002, but for you Republicans, you read about what the Republicans were doing to the Constitution, to your freedom, to your constitutional rights. And we also had, uh, it was the Tips program, the Patriot Act, uh, created a new information office in the Pentagon's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. You know, and it was Admiral Poindexter, who is, and this is what uh, the White House said about Admiral Poindexter, just like Trump, you know, slapping his good buddy, can't remember that guy's name, um, you know, who he chose, who he chose to um, head the takeover of Venezuela. A good, a good outstanding citizen who has done a very good job in what he has done for our country serving the military. That was said about Poindexter. That came from the Bush administration. His five felony convictions for false testimony they lie, cheat, steal, kill, murder, torture. Who cares? Well, the total information awareness, that was the new wing of DARPA. Poindexter committed the new Pentagon office to achieving total information awareness, which meant complete and utter surveillance of everything that you do and say. Hey, it's been going on for a really long time. And guess who told us that? William Binney. Tips. What was the uh, tips? It was that Terrorism Information and Prevention System. Having a nationwide program giving millions of American truckers, letter carriers, train conductors, ship captains, utility employees, and others a formal way to report suspicious terrorist activity on everyone. On everyone. Because tipsters would be people who, in the daily course of their work, they're in a unique position to serve as extra eyes and ears for law enforcement. Right. Well, the public got a little outraged and tips was, well, it's, it was still going on, but not with the garbage men and the postal carriers. Uh, here, TIPS would also maintain a database. Nothing is new under the sun. Nothing new has happened. And it doesn't matter. You know, if we can't get through to people, if they don't care, if they have this hostile aversion to truth, we can't get anywhere. And that really pisses me off. John Whitehead's commentary, the Rutherford Institute. I read this and, you know, there, he, he drives at home, constitutional attorney, 
You know, these are the times that try men's souls. Thomas Paine. Well, it is very trying. But not a whole lot of Americans want to be tried. Take heed, America. Our losses are mounting with every passing day. From 9-11 on, we have just watched uh, the tyrannical waters getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Why have we failed? Because we can't reach the Americans. We can't get them to be on the same page. How many of you have tried to talk to people, even about 9-11 or the geoengineering or uh, the, the dangers of these electronic gadgets, and they don't care or they don't want to know? That's most of the American people. That's why I have said for eight years, our number one enemy is our fellow American. You think you're going to get these Poindexters and, and these uh, Bush Cheney, uh, these Trumps and Clintons, and you think they're going to stop? No. Our only hope was for all of the Americans to stand united and to begin to act appropriately to that Constitution being shred apart. Now, okay, a lot will argue we never had a Constitution. No, we actually did. We actually did. And there were constitutional rights that were adhered to. And there were judges who actually applied the Constitution. I saw that in my own lifetime. Today, gone. Today, it's really just a free-for-all. You know, everybody just doing whatever the hell they want to do and nobody's held accountable for anything, even government officials. You saw what took place in California. Every Californian should have been in Sacramento with that group that was protesting and trying to stop Newsom from signing that contract. Signing into law, I'm sorry, SB 714 and, and the other, uh, can't remember the number. But they didn't show up because they don't care. Wow, okay. Well, I thought that Constitution kind of meant a lot, you know, and it was pretty, I don't know, important um, uh, freedom, you know, important. So many Americans walking around thinking, you know, that we're great, we're exceptional, and we're the beacon of hope, and uh, they didn't think they had any responsibility to guard that Constitution, the freedom. Uh, clearly not. Kids don't have that kind of responsibility. Children don't feel that responsibility. It's the adults. And when we do have adult children, they don't feel they have to do anything. I'm angry about that. Our losses are mounting with every passing day. He wrote this uh, just a few days ago, September 3rd. What began with the post 9-11 passage of the US Patriot Act has snowballed into the eradication of every vital safeguard against government overreach, corruption, and abuse. The citizenry, citizenry's uh, unquestioning acquiescence to anything the government wants to do in exchange for the phantom promise of safety and security has resulted in a society where the nation is being locked down into a militarized, mechanized, hypersensitive, legalistic, self-righteous, goose-stepping antithesis of every principle upon which this nation was founded. How can the older generation allow this to happen? 
government surveillance, militarized police, SWAT team raids, asset forfeiture with police stopping Americans in their cars for nothing or for a, a traffic violation and stealing whatever they can in that car. Uh, not charged with any crime, doesn't matter, I'm going to steal the money that you have. And This has been going on for years. People should be outraged. I posted videos on South Carolina asset forfeiture and the police, man, are just ripping off South Carolinians. Do you think anybody I spoke to in South Carolina cares? No. Well, when you don't care, when you have a population where most people don't care, all of this is very easy, very easy to manifest. Over-criminalization, armed surveillance drones, eminent domain, ah yes, another way to steal people's property. Uh, whole body scanners, stop and frisk searches, police violence and the like, all of which have been sanctioned by Congress, the White House, the courts. Our constitutional freedoms have been steadily chipped away at, undermined, eroded, whittled down, and generally discarded. The rights embodied in the Constitution, if not already evis eviscerated, are on life support. Since the towers fell on 9-11, the U.S. government has posed a greater threat to our freedoms than any terrorist, extremist, or foreign entity ever could. The American people are treated like enemy combatants to be spied on, tracked, scanned, frisked, searched, subject to all manner of intrusions, intimidated, invaded, raided, manhandled, censored, silenced, shot at, locked up, denied due process, and killed. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. And it's happening more and more and more. And most Americans don't care. Just give me my cell phone. You know, Give me Alexa. In allowing ourselves to be distracted by terror drills, foreign war, wars, color-coded warnings, underwear bombers, and other carefully constructed exercises in propaganda, sleight of hand and obfuscation, we failed to recognize that the U.S. government, the government that was supposed to be a government of the people, by the people, for the people, has become the enemy of the people. Oh, it became the enemy of the people a long, long time ago. When Obama you know, was signing that the, uh, n what is it, the National Authorization Act? It, well, frankly, the Patriot Act did away with our due process, but Obama signing on New Year's Eve, when everybody's plastered and no one's paying attention, signs away our due process rights, signs into law uh, legislation that allows our military to show up at anyone's door and rip from their home anyone, take them anywhere in the world, not, they're not allowed to know their charges, no speedy trial, no talking to a lawyer, no talking to family. The family don't even get to know where they are. Wow, that doesn't really sound like a free country, does it? Doesn't sound like the United States of America, does it? But when I tried to get that through to people, they didn't care. This is a government that has grown so corrupt, greedy, power-hungry, tyrannical over the course of the past 240 plus years that our constitutional republic has since given way to idiocracy and representative government has given way to kleptocracy, government ruled by thieves and a kistocracy, I don't know, a government run by unprincipled career politicians corporations, thieves, that panders to the worst vices in our nature and has literal regard, no, has no regard 
for the rights of American citizens. We have a criminal government and nobody cares. You know, that lack of care affects all of us. It affects all of us. If I had a choice to live um, just, all right, I'm going to, well, if I had money, I'm going to buy some land somewhere. I'm going to live off the grid. Um, I'm going to live as I want to live. If I had that choice, as one should in a free country, I'd say to hell with it. Well, I'm not sure if I say to hell with it, but if I had that choice, that means everybody has that choice, so okay. All right. If I had the choice also to deny vaccines, you know, and uh, hey, don't spray over my area. And I don't want any cell towers and Gwen Towers and all of that kind of stuff. We don't have the choice. So we have to live the consequences of the apathetic Americans. And that makes me angry. It makes me angry that no one seems to care about justice. And you know what? So many, so many, uh, it, it's just piling up, piling up, piling up. Justice is a really important healing force. When one has been betrayed in whatever manner, justice heals that person. So think about all of the people who have died, 9-11. Think about all of the families who have been so utterly betrayed by their own fellow Americans, accepting all of the lies, the bullshit, listening to Bush, who gave the order, go shopping. Those terrorists aren't gonna stop us. Go shopping? Go shopping. Go shopping while so many are not only traumatized, as most Americans were, by that event, but they lost. They lost a loved one in, in, well, in a manner, in a way, in a fashion that not too many people will experience. So we're told to go shopping while thousands, a whole lot of thousands, were devastated. And so the loss of their loved one, we're told to go shopping. What a fucking slap in the face. And so many did. So many did just that. But getting to the truth, especially when the betrayal is really so horrendous, and then you have to face all of your fellow Americans who don't give a shit and want you to shut up. No, we are not a caring caring and compassionate people. We are a cruel people. Corrupt, greedy, power-hungry, tyrannical. That's what we are. This is a government that, in conjunction with its corporate partners, views the citizenry as consumers and bits of data to be bought, sold, and traded. In the early 80s, in the early 80s, it was clear that something was wrong with our federal government. In the early 80s, we were watching the outsourcing of American jobs. We were watching the corporate takeover of the federal government. We were watching 
the corruption go on. In the early 80s, and I was young, I was 21, 22, I remember discussions about the corrupt politicians who were getting their pockets padded by corporations. But, oh, well, if you want to hold anybody accountable, you're blaming. You're playing the blame game. How fast the American people can be socially engineered into accepting what works for them. Oh, now I don't have to really take any responsibility because holding people accountable now is a bad quality. So I want to be good. See, most Americans don't want to do anything but vote. They think voting, that action, makes them a responsible citizen. No. No. That, that, it, that's a joke if you stop there. You have to stay on top of what government is doing. And when you see that those representatives that you voted for are not listening to their constituents, then you hold them accountable. Oh, but that takes too much work. This is a government that spies on and treats its people as if they have no right to privacy, especially in their own homes. It's a great article. You might want to read it. Eighteen years. Eighteen years. We are no longer the United States of America. It is gone. The show you watch in Washington, D.C., the show you watch, your town hall, your state government, it's a show. That's all. Because they want everybody to believe that they're still living in the same country. Well, we are not. The brown shirts are out. The tyranny is here. It's been here for a long time. And it's only a matter of time before you experience it. Ah, uh, but you might just be kind of like that German who never really experienced the consequences because they marched in lockstep with what was dictated. We've got an awful lot of Americans who do just that. And they would sell off any of us in a heartbeat to save their own skin. We're in deep, deep trouble. Deep, deep, should I say deep 18 times? for 18 years, how deep it has gone. The fusion centers, the free speech zones, the, hey, don't collect any rainwater. Your grass is too long. The police shooting innocent people, shooting dogs, and they get away with it scot-free. All the people in our for-profit prison system Look, the list is endless. The list is endless. And uh, unfortunately, you know, it's important to um, nip, nip in the bud the disease that is affecting the body whether it's an individual or the collective. And we didn't nip anything in the bud. Yeah, it's very important. That constituted, it was very important to me. Now, um, I really wanted this country to manifest what it spoke. I know, it sounds like a naive child, huh? 
I really, really wanted that. I kind of liked being, you know, a citizen of a country that was the beacon of hope. No, it wasn't like an egotistical, oh, uh, American, I'm exceptional. I just thought, wow, that's kind of cool. But I really wanted the truth to matter. I really wanted the truth to matter. And in 60 years, I haven't found anyone in my life, real life, not talking about the cyber world, that is on the same page That's remarkable. That's really remarkable. Most are interested in their own comfort. Leave me alone. Yeah, the first step begins with we the people. We're not gonna get anywhere certainly not going to get anywhere in this so-called truth community because, you know, well, after Obama, so many just jumped on the Trump wagon. they still in the matrix. Um, the, uh, the numbers of people in this community that don't care about don't care about truth, don't care about evidence, they're ripping people down for whatever reason. Um, I also, I also hate how easy it was. It's been easy for them. You know, I, I think part of the problem is that Americans never faced anything really, you know, like others have around the world. We've had it really easy. During my lifetime, God, we lived a very different experience than everyone else in the world. We did have something different. And we sure did have an awful lot of opportunities and yeah, it was easy. Now I'm not saying individually speaking it was easy. You know, I certainly didn't have an easy life or, you know, individually speaking. But collectively, wow, man. We just kept on skating through as our government was like, or military creating chaos, catastrophes, killing people all over the world. But we, hey, we were fine. And I think that, you know, certainly Americans have grown complacent, that's for sure. But they don't know how to fight anything because they never had to. You know, they don't know. They don't know how to be courageous or brave or all they know is gimme, 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 you know? you know? And I'm talking about certainly with the baby boomers because the generation before us is, yeah, it's dying out. So the baby boomers, my God, spoiled, spoiled, self-centered kids. And, and boy, well, it was the generation that all focus was on for decades and decades because it was the, the, the huge consumer generation. Now, not so much as we're dying off, but, you know, you would have thought that the baby boomers would have been different they fighting 
certainly rebelling against mommy and daddy, rebelling against establishment, fighting to stop the Vietnam War, the civil rights movement, so much was going on. Well, they became materialistic, self-centered little kids and remained that way. I'm not talking about every, everyone. I am talking about most. So, it's not a surprise that we got here, but it's really upsetting. It's really upsetting. But really, who cares, right? Oh well. Carol, you're too serious. No, I'm not, actually. But I do regard truth and freedom you know, I, kind of important in life. And when I see so many getting destroyed deliberately, I don't like it. I don't know. Call me crazy. And then when I see so many who just don't care about that, yeah. A lot upsets me. Please don't tell me to take a few days off. First of all, I don't have that option anymore. But I think that what has happened in this country should be upsetting everyone. I don't think my feelings are inappropriate. I actually think what I feel is appropriate. And I do wish that everybody felt the same. We're an empire. We're a dying empire. And none of this is going to turn around, guys. None of it. So what's important? What's really important is that you continue working on yourself as I do. And you don't degrade people. You know, Look, I need real life. Real life is still number one for me. The cyber world is very hard for me to, uh, I'll never adjust to it. I'll never you know, feel comfortable in it, but this is what we have, right? So I ask that you don't leave the comments trashing people, disparaging people, calling people shills, controlled opposition, If you have no evidence, then you're showing who you are by leaving that comment. Can we try to support one another in a, in a more consistent, continuous way? That would be nice. Try to help one another. There's a lot that we could be doing that could ease uh, the pain, the stress that a lot are facing now. Eight years ago, I can't recall one subscriber who was suffering the consequences. I'm not saying that there weren't, but I didn't know. Eight years later, So many subscribers now. Some have killed themselves. Some have died. Some have lost homes. Some have gone homeless. Oh, a list of consequences. We need to care about one another. We need to stop, you know, 
fighting with each other. We need to really grow up and face reality. And the reality is we've got a lot of hurting, hurting Americans and they need help. And I think that, you know, putting our energies towards figuring out how to help <laughs> is better than trashing people and degrading people and fighting with one another, you know, over stupid stuff. I'd really like to change my attention, which I've been wanting to do for a long, long time, and focus on that, because there's no stopping this, what we're seeing every single day. There's no stopping it. And you can think all you want about how, oh, don't give up the fight and don't, no. There's no stopping what's happening because we do not have our fellow Americans in this fight and those in this community so many are on different pages um, so many uninterested just like the sleeping sheeple of doing anything and so many are you know just well, it seems like they like trashing people rather than, you know, spending time and effort on trying to help one another. We have to make changes. I mean, is it even possible to do that in this country? I don't know. I don't know. But it's a very different time than it was when people are talking about the 3% who, you know, started the American Revolution or whatever. We're living a very different time. And we've let go. We have just ignored, didn't bother, didn't get involved for a very long time. So they've been successfully uh, taking down this country and installing their tyranny. We waited too long. And yeah, the disease got malignant and it sure did metastasize. Am I even pronouncing that right? It sounds like I'm giving up. No, I'm not. I am seeing reality for what it is. And that is the reality. We've got governments now. It's clear. State governments not listening to anyone in the state doing whatever the hell they want to do. California is a great example. And the residents of California, California, they don't seem to care. I'm not talking about those activists and protests. I'm not talking about all of you. I am talking about the majority. They don't care. They don't show up. It's a hard fact to face that we are surrounded by people who are living a complete pretense. They live a fantasy. And when you know that so many people are getting destroyed, it's very hard to maintain a balance emotionally 
maintain that sanity. Because very often I have felt that visceral response where I have wanted to say things to people and I just shut up because there's no there's no moving the people that I'm surrounded by. Well, it's 9-11. 9-11. It's been one hell of an 18 years. And yeah, we are not the country that so many think we still live in. It's gone. It's gone. It wasn't when I was growing up. But wow, <laughs> what a difference. What a difference. And in the early 60s and 70s, if the American people didn't ignore what was going on, if they demanded a truthful commission on JFK's assassination, RFK, MLK. If they cared about the truth and demanded that truth, well, 9-11-2019 might be very different everything might have gone very differently. This has been a boiling frog, slow transformation that they had planned and back 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even early 2000s. No. They weren't staring at their cell phones. Can't blame the frequencies. Didn't have, we had actual food that sustained our, our health. We had choice, we had opportunities. We did have freedom. Uh, we had an awful lot, but we did nothing with it. Nothing at all. We didn't. Even then, take responsibility as adults do. And that childlike behavior became cemented in the American psyche. It got us right here. Boy, do we need to grow up. 